What is up, everybody? JT Dangerously here once again. I am back to do my New Japan Pro Wrestling's Royal Quest 2 Night 2 2022 predictions. Now, Royal Quest 2 Night 2 happens this Sunday from the Crystal Palace National Sports Center once again in London, England. Now, this card for Night 2 of Royal Quest 2 is pretty damn stacked. We have eight fantastic matches, so I am extremely excited to do my Royal Quest 2 Night 2 predictions for you guys this year, and I hope you guys do enjoy. Now, if you guys haven't checked out all the great videos that we put up on the channel this week, guys, definitely go check them out if you haven't because this is the final video in the month of September so hope you guys be able to watch this video and all the fantastic videos we put up on the channel in the month of September this year and as always show your support the channel as always guys by watching these videos super kicking those like buttons hitting that notification bell commenting your picks and your opinions in the comment sections down below now if this is your first time watching my channel today guys as a first time viewer this is your first video boy big to go in if you're a huge fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling like myself and you're ready for Royal Quest 2 Night 2 from the Crystal Palace National Sports Center in London, England. Welcome to the Dangerous Alliance. I'm JT Dangerously. Welcome to the club because this club is. Just, just two. Woo woo! Again, thank you guys so very much. Now, other than that, let's get right into these predictions. Let's start off with the first matchup. It is a tag team showdown. On one side, you have the former Rev Pro British Cruiserweight Champion Michael Oku and his partner Robbie X. And their opponents, both representing Suzuki Gun, Ichiban, consisting of Doki and the Rogue Luchador El Desperado. So, coming from me in this tag team showdown, I am going to go with the Suzuki Gun squad of Doki, Master of the Doki Choki, and the Rogue Luchador El Desperado to get it done and defeat Michael Oku and Robbie X by any means. And now next matchup, it is another tag team showdown on one side. First, he is the reigning Rev Pro British Cruiserweight Champion. He is known as Luke Jacob and his partner Ethan Allen. They are known as the Young Guns. And their opponents, both representing Lopes and Gobernables de Apone, consisting of Ticking Time Bomb, Hiromu Takahashi, and Cold Skull Sonata. So coming from me in this tag team showdown... I am going to go with the LIJ squad of Hiromu Takahashi and Cold Skull Sonata to get it done and defeat the Young Guns by any means. And now the next matchup. It is a first round match in the tournament to crown the first ever IWGP Women's Champion. On one side, she is looking to make a huge splash in this tournament. She is known as Ava White. And her opponent was the former and second ever World of Stardom Champion. We, you must remember her from her days in NXT UK. She is the alpha female Jazzy Gabber. Now this tournament is crowning a brand new IWGP Women's Champion between Stardom and New Japan Pro Wrestling and the finals of that tournament will happen on November 20th at Historic X Over where New Japan Pro Wrestling and Stardom will have a collaboration and whoever wins this matchup will be facing the Pirate Princess herself Kyrie on October 23rd during the first round of the uh, World of uh, the um, Stardom World Tag League. So coming from me in this first round match to see who will be facing Kyrie on October 23rd and advance to the tournament to see who will become the first ever IWGP Women's Champion. I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about Ava White, but I did watch Jazzy Gabbard in NXT UK. That was the only time I've seen her as a bodyguard. So coming from me, I am going to go with the alpha female Jazzy Gabbard to get it done here and defeat Ava White by any means and advance to the semifinals of the IWGP Women's Championship Tournament. And our next matchup, it is a massive 10-man tag team battle. On one side, you have the team consisting of Gabriel Kidd, the shooter Shota Umino, the reigning Rev Pro British Heavyweight Champion Ricky Knight Jr., and a team that could be coming in as the former IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. And if you know their music, you'll know who I'm talking about. They are Cash Wheeler and Dax Hardwood. They are 7-star FT. 
FTR. And their opponents, all representing the United Empire, consisting of his lordship Gideon Gray, the dominator, the great Okan, the team that could be coming in as the new IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. They are currently the first ever strong openweight tag team champions, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davies, Aussie Open. And finally, you have the leader of the United Empire and the reigning and first ever British-born IWGP United States Champion, and I know he'll be watching the main event very carefully. And if you know his music, his old music, once again, you'll know who I'm talking about. Elevate me to the sky, whoa, we're so elevated. Elevate me to the sky. He is the Commonwealth Kingpin, Will Ospreay. So coming from me in this massive 10-man tag team battle... Hopefully, Aussie Open won their match against FTR and became the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions on night one. And I know Will Ospreay is definitely going to be looking for Ricky Knight Jr., the man that ended his Rev Pro British Heavyweight title reign on in August in the Rev Pro's 12th anniversary show. But coming from me, I'm going to go with my boys in the United Empire, Gideon Gray, the Dominator of the Great Ocon, Aussie Open, and the Commonwealth Kingpin, the IWGP US Champion, Will Ospreay, to get it done and defeat the team of Gabriel Kidd, the shooter Shota Umino, Rick Ricky Knight Jr. and FTR by any means. And that's the power of the United Empire. And our next matchup, it is a six-man tag team battle with momentum at stake for the main event of Declaration of Power in Rio Goku Sumo Hall on October the 10th. On one side, they are all representing Hontai, consisting of the man who turned his back on Switchblade Jay White at Burning Spirit and Kobe, the young gun, Hikaleo, the ace of the universe, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and the number one contender for the undisputed IWGP Championship. And if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is the good bad guy Tomatonga and their opponent, all representing the Switchblade era of Consisting of the Good Brothers, the Machine Gun and Never Open Weight Champion Carl Anderson and the Big LG Luke Gallows and their partner, the leader of Bullet Club and the undisputed IWGP Champion, the true Grand Slam winner in New Japan Pro Wrestling's history and he'll be accompanied by Gato and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. It's time for all of you to breathe in his new era and it's time to breathe with the... Switch Blade era and it's just too sweet. He is Switchblade, Jay White. Now, this matchup, like I said, is all about momentum for the main event of Declaration of Power on October the 10th, where Tomatonga will be challenging my boy Switchblade, Jay White, for the undisputed IWGP Championship in the main event. But I also think Hikaleo is going to play a huge factor in that match. And even though he did turn on Bullet Club, I think something is definitely up, and it's going to happen in that main event match in Rio Goku Sumo Hall. So coming from me in the six-man tag team battle with momentum at stake for the main event of Declaration of Power on October the 10th in Rio Goku Sumo Hall for the undisputed IWGP Championship, I am going to go with the Hontai squad of Hikaleo, the ace of the universe, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and the good bad guy Tamatonga to get it done here and defeat the good brothers and my boy Switchblade Jay White by any means. 
And now the next matchup. It is a special singles match on one side. He is representing TMDK, and he's looking to get his biggest win in his New Japan Pro Wrestling career in 2022. He is the very talented Bad Dude Tito, a.k.a. Teets, and, their opponent, and his opponent is the leader of chaos. He is the former five-time IWGP Heavyweight Champion. He is the former undisputed IWGP Champion as well, and he is the winner of the G1 Climax 32 Tournament. And if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada. Now, this is a huge matchup for Bad Dude Tito. Easily his biggest match in New Japan Pro Wrestling after coming to uh, coming to the coming to Japan from being on New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong. And for me, this is his biggest match. I mean, his his first biggest match was against Minoru Suzuki in Corrigan Hall in September, but this is his Greatest and toughest test, and it's not going to be easy. There is side, you have Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada looking to get it done here, and he's getting ready for his huge rematch against Jonah at Declaration of Power in Rio Goku on October 10th, and he's looking to take down one of TMDK's members before that huge match in Rio Goku. So coming from me in the special singles showdown between Bad Dude Tito and the Rainmaker... I am going to go with the Rainmaker himself, Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada, to get it done here and defeat Bad Dude Tito by any means in a banger. And now the next matchup, and this one is going to be a damn good one. It is a special singles match on one side. He is representing Chaos, and he is a former two-time Rev Pro British Heavyweight Champion, and he is the only man in New Japan Pro Wrestling history to hold this Never Open Away Championship six time, and he is one tough some bitch. And if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. <laughs> He is the Stone Pitbull Tomohiro Ishii or Golem and his opponent is the leader of TMDK and he is the former NXT North American Champion and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is Top Dog Jonah. Now, this is the second one on one meeting between Jonah and Tomohiro Ishii. Ishii won the last meeting over Jonah all the way back of April of this year at Impact Wrestling's Rebellion. So, this is their first matchup in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now, starting off with Tomohiro Ishii, this is a big matchup for him, a chance to knock off Jonah for the second time this year alone. And with Jonah defeating Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada in the G1, if Ishii can beat Jonah, that could put him right back into the title hunt. But it's not going to be easy. There is how you have Top Dog Jonah looking to get some momentum going into his huge matchup against Kazuchika Okada at Declaration of Power on October the 10th in Rio Goku and the and a chance to knock off Kazuchika Okada not once but twice this year but he's got to go out he's got to go he's got to get through the stone pit bull to do it so coming from me in this very special singles matchup between these two hosses that I know are going to tear the house down in London this one's going to be good. The question is, can Ishii even pick up Jonah for the vertical drop brain buster? That's the biggest question. And we all know when Jonah goes up to that top rope, nobody kicks out of his torpedo. So this one's going to be a great Hoss showdown. But coming from me, I am going to go with top dog Jonah to get it done here and get some momentum into his huge matchup against Kazuchika Okada on October the 10th and defeat the stone pit bull Tomohiro Ishii by any means in a Hoss banger.
And now it's time for the main event of Royal Quest 2 Night 2. It is a very important one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one grudge match. And the winner gets a shot at the IWGP United States Championship on one side. He is representing Suzuki Gun, Ichiban, and he is a former three-time IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champion, one half of Dangerous Techers, and he is the former four-time Rev Pro British Heavyweight Champion. And he's looking to get a shot at the IWGP United States Championship. He is, in my opinion, the best technical wrestler in the world today, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is Zack Sabre Jr. And his opponent is the leader of Los Ingobernables de Apon. And he is a former two-time IWGP heavyweight and IWGP Intercontinental Champion. And he's looking to have his path to Wrestle Kingdom 17 with a victory. And if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. Ooh, Naito! He is Tetsuya Naito. Now this is the 10th one-on-one -on -one meeting between Zack Sabre Jr. and Tetsuya Naito. Naito leads the all-time series 5-4. to four. Now Zack Sabre Jr.'s last victory over Naito was in the finals of this year's New Japan Cup tournament all the way back in March of this year. Now Naito's last victory over Zen SJ happened in less than two minutes in this year's G1 Climax 32 uh, tournament. Now this matchup, like I said, is very important because whoever wins between these two rivals will get a shot at Will Ospreay's IWGP United States championship so this matchup is definitely big now starting off with Zen SJ this is a matchup he has been obsessed with ever since losing in one minute and 58 seconds to Tetsuya Naito in the G1 Climax tournament ZSJ has been almost apoplectic at getting his revenge against Tetsuya Naito we all saw how he reacted after he lost in under two minutes and he's never lost and he's never had a loss in under two minutes and the fact that Naito did it and then you saw Naito egging him on Zack Sabre Jr. has been waiting for this opportunity, and to be all honesty, Zack Sabre Jr. has been waiting two long years to get a shot at the IWGP US title. If you guys remember, at New Beginning in Osaka back in February of 2020, then US Champion John Moxley was attacked by Zack Sabre Jr., and he made his claim for the US Championship, but then COVID hit next uh, COVID hit. The, the next month later, and that match was never was never going to happen again. But now ZSJ has, has an opportunity to finally win his first IWGP Singles Championship and a chance to get his hands on Will Ospreay once again. There is how you have Tetsuya Naito looking to start his road to Wrestle Kingdom 17, and this is the very this is a road this this challenge for. Naito for the U.S. title is so weird because if you guys remember, when this title was introduced, Tetsuya Naito didn't give a shit about it. And I think if I remember right in the press conference, he said if he won the title, he'd just throw it in the trash. Now, that Naito in 28, that Naito back then didn't really care. We all saw what he did with the IC title and he destroyed it. And I get that, but... His road, he's trying to win, he's trying to be the, he's trying to main event Wrestle Kingdom 17. We all know that Naito's wanting to do that. He couldn't get, he made that promise during the G1 Climax Tournament. He was just one victory away from doing it, but Will Ospreay ended his dreams in the semifinals. So now Naito's looking towards this road to challenge for the U.S. Championship, but I don't know where his mentality is for this. I don't think he really cares about the U.S. title. He's just trying to see if he can start a road to the undisputed IWGP title. So coming from me in this personal one-on-one -on -one grudge match where the winner gets a shot at my boys Will Ospreay's IWGP United States title. <sighs> this one's a tough pick because I know there's a lot of Naito fans that are hoping that he will achieve that dream of main eventing Wrestle Kingdom this year. But his road is going to take a lot of speed bumps. And this is a very unique road that he wants to go through. He wants to go through the U.S. Championship 
and possibly the the undisputed IWGP Championship. But coming from me, Zack Sabre Jr. has been waiting two years for this opportunity. It's in his hometown. It's in his home country. I just do not see Zack Sabre Jr. losing this match. So coming from me, I'm going to go with the greatest technical wrestler in the wrestling world today, Zack Sabre Jr. to get it done and defeat Tetsuya Naito by any means in an absolute main event banger. And those are my New Japan Pro Wrestling's Royal Quest 2 Night 2 2022 predictions. I want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Comment below. Who do you see winning that huge main event match for a shot at the IWGP United States title between Zack Sabre Jr. and Tetsuya Naito? And and who do you see winning those two special singles matchups between Bad Dude Tio and Kazuchika Okada and that Haas showdown between Jonah and Tomohiro Ishii? Let me know all of your picks in the comment section. Let's have a conversation about it. Of course, I'm always on to see your comment. Like it and, of course, reply right back to me because comments and your opinions are absolutely always welcome on this channel. Now, I do want to thank you guys so, so very much for watching all of my videos in the month of September on the channel, guys. You guys blew every one of my videos in September up, and I cannot say thank you enough. You guys are the true MVPs of my channel, and I'm proud to have you guys part of this dangerous alliance this huge family and now we go into a very big month in the month of october with big videos for college football predictions nfl predictions we got major league baseball postseason predictions coming back on the channel looking to make it six years in a row without a, win a losing record and we also got two big new japan pro wrestling shows we're going to be predicting in october for declaration of power on october 10th and rumble on 44th street later in the month so again Thank you guys so very much for all the support you guys give me on the channel in the month of September. And hope you guys will continue that into the month of October going into 2023. Now before you guys go, as always, you guys can never forget to do this. That like button, comment, share with friends, go super kick. That like button, like only you guys can. Of course, guys can never forget to do this as well. That subscribe button become part of this bigger and dangerous. Dangerous Alliance, we are getting dangerously close to 1,100 subscribers on the channel. So again, thank you guys for all the support. And if you guys are not subscribed to the channel yet, what are you guys waiting for? If you're a fan of professional wrestling when it comes to New Japan Pro Wrestling, All Elite Wrestling, the WWE and Ring of Honor Wrestling, and you're a fan of professional sports when it comes to the NBA, the NHL, Major League Baseball, the NFL and college football, super kick that subscribe button, folks. It's free and you become part of this bigger, dangerous alliance. And I will see you guys on October the 3rd, the first Monday of October, for my official Week 6 college football predictions, my Week 5 NFL predictions, and later that week, my official New Japan Pro Wrestling's deck of Power 2022 predictions, Switchblade Tamatonga 2 and Jonah Okada 2, and later that same week, my official 2022 Major League Baseball postseason wildcard predictions. Later days, guys, have, have a wonderful rest of the week. Stay safe and uh, stay safe to all you guys uh, in Florida during Hurricane Ian. And as always, stay dangerous. Later days and peace.